In this lecture, we're going to explore model items functions for parts within SOLIDWORKS drawings. With model items, we will be able to easily and automatically export all dimensions we added when modeling a part into a drawing. So with few clicks, we can go from the non-dimension drawings on the left to the fully dimension drawing on the right. Let's check out how this works. You can download this drawing and the part from the download section linked to this lecture. Using model items is quite simple. In the top, we can go to the annotation tab and then we'll find the option model items. So let's click on it and see. Now we want the dimensions to cover everything in the model. So we're going to the source, use the drop down menu and select entire model and then simply click the check mark. And here you go. We have just finished dimensioning the whole model. However, we're not done here yet. We'll still go over three important points when dealing with model items. Point number one, the locations of the dimensions might not be ideal. So after you apply this function, you would probably need to adjust where the dimensions are displayed to make your work look more friendly. So let's go ahead and do this quickly. Okay, now this looks a bit better. Point number two, the dimensions imported are the exact ones inputted when the designer designed the part. This has a very big advantage because this way, we are guaranteeing the capture of the design intent in our drawings. Point number three is about hidden dimensions and other options when using model items. If we look closely at the front view, we'll easily notice that we are missing two essential dimensions, which are the height and the width of the main outlining rectangle. This is because whoever designed the part did set those two dimensions to not show with the typical straightforward model items option. Let's investigate this first by going back to the model. So if I right click on the drawing, I can select open part and this will open the original part. Now in the design tree, I'll go back to my first boss extrude and go back to the sketch. Let's go ahead and enter the edit view. Here you notice that the two dimensions, 110 and 65, are purple in color. And if I double click on one, you will notice that this option on the far right is toggled off. And this option says, mark dimension to be imported into a drawing. This is usually toggled on by default. However, if when designing a part, you turn this one off, then this specific dimension will not be imported as we use model items. So in case you want this number to show up, we have two ways to do it. First way is to turn this on, click on the green check mark, you'll notice it turns black, and then go back to the sketch and run the model item again. Now you see the 110 popped up. However, the 65 is not shown yet. This brings us to the other additional options we have when we use model items. So if I go back to model items, I select entire model, and then here you have a title dimensions and you have multiple options under it. For now, the only one that is toggled on is the first one, which is marked for drawing. And this will import all the dimensions that are marked for drawing from the part itself. The option next to it says not marked for drawings. And if we click on this option, this will include all the dimensions that the designer chose for them not to show up in our drawing. And then there are lots of other more specific options under dimensions, annotations, and reference geometries that we will not get into at this point. So now if I have the second option, not marked for drawing, toggled on, and then click on the green check mark, 
you will notice that the 65 appears. Now in my perspective, this information presented in the drawing as it is now are sufficient to deliver my personal design intent. The only thing we have left is to more aesthetically fix our drawing. And we can have this up there, we can have this colored, we can adjust the information block and change the scale of the drawing to more fit into the page. We already know how to do all those, so I'm not going back to them again. And with this, we conclude this lecture on model items for parts. So while we're here, you can go ahead and spend some time experimenting with this useful feature.